Hi everybody, Renegade67 and or 68 here with some more Let's Play slash stream Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works of the Blind Varieta. So last time on the Fate Stay Night, um, Lancer is the best third wheel. Like, you know, he is the best extra dynamic to the relationship between Shiro and Rin. I love it. I love the I love that interaction. I have not had such a good laugh in a long time. That, you know, that whole choice that I chose about you have one more at that and oh, oh, I haven't had such a good laugh like that. It's, it's been a while. Like I laugh, but that was a, that was a, that was a strong laugh. Oh man. Mm. Anyways, can he make me laugh more? Maybe he can make me cry if he has a sad, I think he's very liable to make me cry no matter how he goes out because, you know, he's in an unfortunate circumstance. So, night stay night. I mean, metaphorically cry, not actually cry, but make me sad enough that if, you know, that I would think, you know, that's sad. I do sometimes cry. It's just rarely, truly the rom-com route. <laughs> uh, um, it's more common for me to cry because of laughter than it is because of to cry from something sad. Although I've noticed something about myself. Music plays a big role in convincing me to cry. Like, good, sad music. Like, um... I was listening to, actually this wasn't recently, it was a while ago at this point, but I was listening to a song that was happening during a moment that I considered really sad in a certain game, and I was just listening to it out of context randomly because it was in the mood, and I just started crying. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that's when I kind of put the connection together, um, that I really associate the song with the scene, and so some, some kind of nostalgia thing going on there, but... I don't genuinely cry very often, but it does seem like there's a there's a tie to music in some way. Sad music can really help the scene, I guess, for me. Um, anyways, uh, I think I teared up only a few times this whole game, and only one time I outright cried. I don't know if I've um, cried yet watching this game at all. I don't think so. But um, I don't believe I've cried yet uh, through the course of this game. But... Uh, I might have teared up from laughter. I don't believe I teared up from laughing last time. It was a different kind of laughter, but... Anyways, before that, there's just one more conversation. Oh? What What one more conversation? Is this an interlude? A weird interlude? Or is it still Shiro's <laughs> flashback? Just as they exit the forest, and when the sky is beginning to lighten up... Just as they exit the forest... Oh! All of a sudden, an interlude, I guess. Just as they exit the forest. Unless Shiro is staying back... Um, this seems like a random interlude that didn't call itself an interlude. Before they go to the church, she informs him of the fact that she is kept hidden. What? Just as they exit the forest, and when the sky is beginning to lighten up, before they go to the church, that would be Shiro, Lancer, and Rin, she informs him of the fact that she has kept hidden. Rin informs who of the fact that who's hiding? Or is this Caster? Wait. But no, they're exiting the forest. I'm confused. Oh! Oh, that's pretty big. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. There's only one of the pendant that you gave back to me. Okay, this feels a little sudden. Before they go to the church, she informs him of... Oh! Oh, okay. I misread the circumstance. She informs him of the fact she has kept hidden. Not she informs him of the fact she has kept hidden. That's how I read it initially. And I'm like, what? You're hiding? From... <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it now. Uh... I'll tell you right now, there's only one of the pendant that you gave back to me. She does not tell him what that means, and he does not inquire about it. Okay. So, I don't remember. Does she know that he knows about the double pendant? He saw, um, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she knows about the double pendant, but does she know that he knows? Um, I know he saw a pendant at uh, her place. Did she, did he tell her that he also took home a similar pendant when they were having their talk early? I don't remember. Hmm. But anyways, um, he does not inquire about it. 
Uh, probably deep down, I think he already knows at this point. He's a smart cookie. Is because such matters are unnecessary when they're about to face their greatest enemy, Caster. Sure, let's go with that. I think such matters are very necessary, given that it relates to someone on the enemy's side. Shiro never gave her his pendant. Well, Shiro in the future does. I know Shiro never gave her his pendant. I just don't remember if, um, when Shiro was waking up after he was going to go chase after Rin, he saw Rin's pendant, but he left it there. Um, and then he followed after Rin. Um, yeah. And then, and then she met, he met up with her and he was like, uh, and after the archer scene, they had their little quiet scene. Um, yes, he told her about the one he has at home. Okay, that makes sense. All right. I don't remember the exact contents of that scene, but it would not be surprised me if that happened in that scene. <clears throat> it's because such matters are unnecessary when they are about to face their greatest enemy, Caster. The one and only pendant. <laughs> you say it's unnecessary, but then your mind goes back to it? You liar. It's very necessary because it relates to Archer being on their side. The one he found in her room and returned to her. But you still have a pendant back at your place, Shiro. Mm. The one he found on that night and put into his desk. Oh, is that your wrong assumption, Shiro? That the one he found on that night and put into his desk was then made its way to her room? Because that's the wrong assumption, Shiro. <laughs> Oh, I see. The one he found in her room. In her so he did take the one from her room with her and gave it back to her. Right. That That's fitting, but that's not the same pendant. Now is not the time to ask about the contradiction. That's all that I need to tell you. I'll just assume you're smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> no guilty conscience. Would you need to be a guilty conscience? Um, debatable. Depends on what's about to happen. Because, like, you know... If Shiro ends up in a position where he kills his future self, that's going to be a little awkward, you know, if he doesn't know. That's all I need to tell you. Oh, you said you weren't going to say anything more and then she goes on to say more. <laughs> Wait. Um, she does not tell him what that means. Uh, it looks like she's half telling him what that means. The pendant you found in my room is something Archer returned to me on the day you were attacked by Lancer. Yeah, now there's no ambiguity, Shiro. <laughs> now you gotta, you gotta, to some extent, <laughs> know what that means. Maybe you can't fully piece, put the piece together, but I think you're smart enough. I think Shiro's smart enough. Despite all his self-hatred and stuff that he tries to, you know, put away, I think he's smart when you go, uh, you know, when you look past that stuff. <laughs> I thought he went and picked it up for me. Yes, that's, I think, the, the clear implication was that's what would happen. Until Shiro was like, no, I have it. The decisive battle is near. Are you just ignoring her? Because it seems like she's elaborating. I thought he went and picked it up for me. Hmm. I thought he did, but he didn't. She's being clear and clear. Interesting that she's deciding to tell Shiro about this now. Um, maybe because Shiro continues to reject, you know, her advances of, uh, you have to like yourself more, or you have to, you know, not always, you know, put others above yourself, etc, etc, that she's feeling desperate in combination with the fact that they're about to fight, and she doesn't know what's going to happen with, um, bad guy Archer, who is now working for Caster, that she feels now is an appropriate time to tell him, I suppose. The tall church can be seen in the horizon. Of course, Rin being the stone that she is, isn't going to tell him the whole details, and she's just going to hope he figures it out. And I think he's smart enough to figure it out, but at the moment, he's not going to want to figure it out, because he does not want to relate himself to Archer at all. Okay. Tosaka says she wants to confirm one last time. Okay. Our roles are already set. Okay. So, I think because she dropped that just now, I think that makes a pretty strong implication that whether or not this uh, big showdown is the final battle of the timeline, I'm doubting it. I think it's more of a setup. But it's going to be a battle, but I think it's going to be like a setup battle. Um, I'm assuming we're about to get the proper revelation um, uh, during this battle, as it were. 
Whether or not Archer lives this battle, I think, is up for debate. I can see it going both ways. If I recall, the pendant is only subtly hinted in the fate route. In the beginning, after he shied, Shiro said in his inner monologue, With unsteady hands, I managed to get the blood wiped off and pick up any trash lying around and put it into my pocket. Okay, yeah, uh, sure, I was going to assume that... <laughs> That, okay, I guess there's some very minor foreshadowing there, but uh, the notion of that pendant being trash, that's very small. I, I'd be surprised if anyone thought about that and was like, oh, that must be the pendant, despite the fact that Archer already gave it to Rin. <laughs> uh, which I don't mind. I don't mind that uh, making sense in high, high, high hindsight, but saying that that's subtly hinted, I think is a bit of a stretch. I mean, I don't think I would call it a hint. I think a hint is something that you can realistically be expected to connect the dots with without hindsight as it were and i think that's more of something that makes sense just with hindsight mm. i don't think anyone could be realistically expected to put those dots together so i wouldn't really call it a hint our roles are already set lancer will draw archer and saber away from caster all right is Lancer going to make it out okay? To be fair, Archer probably wants to turn on Caster anyway, and Saber definitely does if she's able, so maybe they can squeeze their way out of that. We will use that opening to attack Caster. Mm. Lancer asks, ironically, if we would be able to beat her by ourselves. To that... <laughs> oh... I mean, yeah, because Kazuki's going to be there, too, and possibly Assassin, although we already went over the idea that Assassin's probably not going to be there. Ask ironically if we'd be able to beat her by ourselves. Uh, if she was on his A-game and Rin's on her A-game, maybe. I think there's a chance. Yeah, I'm sure I can outwit Caster if I can fight her one-on-one -on -one with her. If I can fight one-on-one -on -one with her. Oh, uh, Rin, is this your overconfidence? I think it's a bit of a combination. Um, because Shiro sort of, you know, she backed her up in their earlier conversation after Archer left her about, you have, to, you're about being overconfident and all that. Like, sure, um, you, you might not, things might not always work out, but you shouldn't regret. So I think this is sort of playing into the fact that she's trying the best to believe in herself. It's good to believe in yourself as, you know, and I think she is going to be very careful in this situation. But I also think it's possible she's being overconfident. But, you know, the only way to prove she's not being overconfident is to succeed, I suppose. Turn a lie into the truth. I'm sure I can outwit Caster if I can fight one-on-one -on -one with her. Hopefully, though, she has a real thought-out plan, though. And she's not going to wing it. <laughs> Tosaka answer was with confidence. If Rin uses all her 10 gems and Shiro starts projecting like his life depends on it, they have a chance. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm just not sure if Rin is actually thinking that way or if she's being confident because of her talk with Shiro about how, well, I have to be confident. That's what I said I am. Keep living the lie because <laughs> it's too sad for it to be untrue. Mm. I don't know what she meant by outwitting her. She didn't tell us even when, when we asked, so it must be a plan that will have a lower success rate if we know about it. That sounds weird. I mean, outwitting her, if you mean you're assuming that Archer will turn on her, because you know Archer is Shiro in the future past, that's a pretty big assumption, but uh, maybe. Although, if that's the case, would you really tell Shiro? I guess that's maybe why you'd tell Shiro. Maybe your plan involves... Archer, and so that's why you felt it was respectful to tell Shiro, even if you didn't tell him everything? I suppose you don't want to get him off his game, and you're worried that if you tell him everything, and he's not willing to accept it. I guess that makes sense. Tell him as much as he needs to know. If he figures it out himself, good. If he chooses not to figure it out, then that means he, he's going to feel grody about it, so you don't want it to mess with his A-game. I guess that's fair. Considering Shiro's personality, he can screw up a lot of plans. Shiro also has some good plans. He's generally a wing-it planner, to be fair. He doesn't tend to think much in advance, but he's a pretty good wing-it planner, I'd say. Then what I need to do is fulfill Tazaka's demand. With all my might, I will keep Kazuki from protecting Caster. Hmm. If I need them, I'll project his swords as many times as necessary. Ah... Uh. This sounds dangerous. 
He had just been stabbed by Lancer and had magic heart surgery by Rin, so I think him not noticing the fate route at the time was fine. Um, noticing the pendant thing? I don't think there was anything to notice, because as far as he knew, he just had the pendant. Um, Shiro was smarter about it in the second timeline. Uh, he seemed to notice, oh yeah, it's Rin. Although I think that comes more from subconscious understanding. It's debatable, um, because it, I think it has to come from subconscious understanding, because otherwise... The, otherwise, the implication is that he already thought it was Rin, but didn't want to accept that it was Rin, because, like, no, Rin wouldn't be involved in that kind of ucky stuff. Which is weird, because Rin would have saved his life in that case. So, that's what it says to me. It's more subconscious understanding, because of the timeline one. Maybe not, but... Mm. But, yeah, the whole pendant thing, I don't think uh, there was any reason for him to have noticed before that. Um... Uh, but the noticing Rin was the one who saved him uh, is debatable. I'll project his swords as many times as necessary. Mm, back to those two lines. I close my eyes and dive inside myself. Oh boy, self-dragon sex, let's go. The magic circuit inside of me is stable. Well, that's good. <laughs> Are we ready to make it unstable again? I hope so. Magic beyond one ability will destroy the caster. So will it destroy Caster with a capital C? Mmm. Half of my body became numb the first time. It was easy and nothing happened to me the second time. Um. There's no guarantee the third time will be the same, but I don't think it's a problem to project his swords. Okay, there's logic there. I guess you could say it was easy, but that's... Do you remember your mindset during the second time, Shiro? You were super duper confident. That's probably why it was so easy. My body is stable. The magic circuit that was hard even to construct is easily activated now. I think this goes back to the whole idea that he was doing it the hard way the whole time, but when he projected Archer's swords, he kind of forced his body to do it the proper way, um, which is what, you know, fucked him up for so much. And then his body sort of acclimated after the fact, I think is the idea. Um, so magic drugs without the drugs, just a whole bunch of pain. It's like there's a fake nerve behind my real nerves, and they're reversible with the push of a button. Or, you know, it's that and or a connection with Archer from the future that's flowing him, you know, more mana or something. Which I think there definitely is that. It's, 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 it's hard to say. It's hard to say if he's just naturally this magically talented, or if he's this magically talented because he's connected with his Archer future self, which creates potentially a paradox idea that, oh, he's this magically talented because of his Archer future self, and because he's this magically talented, he gets strong enough to become his Archer future self, who then feeds back and gives his Shiro past self the magically talented stuff from being connected to Archer. You know, it <laughs> they're reversible with a push of a button. I'm trying to convince myself that it's because I've gotten used to it. But you think that's a lie? It's because you're connected to Archer! I can easily prepare the swords. Projection has become my primary weapon. Oh, hey! <laughs> I, uh, I've said this before, but I hope this all doesn't get undone when we start Timeline 3 and he just goes back to being, Nope, I've got nothing! Oh. I want to see him fight kind of, you know... Because th that's the thing, is that I enjoy the progression of, like, Shiro becoming a better fighter over time. And so, you know, when they go to him getting the projection in Timeline 1, then Timeline 2, he's just back to amplifying wooden legs or whatever of tables i'm like ah, but you could project so i hope i don't know i hope there's some way to maintain this um because his mental state is progressing because timeline two is clearly a progression of timeline one i want his physical ability to help out in combat to progress too to an extent so projection has become my primary weapon it's a big improvement over 10 days ago it's not only my magic. My sword technique has improved as well. Mm-hmm. Because you're studying based off a style that was always <laughs> more natural for your body. Ellipses. The reason behind it. Because you were studying his techniques. Mm. No, I try not to think about the reason. Yep, you're trying to avoid that at all costs. I'm not like him. I'm definitely not like him. I'm definitely not him. It's more important to beat Caster and take back Saber. Yep, don't even leave Archer in the equation, right? Asking myself stupid questions to come after the battle. Nope, it's going to come up during the battle for sure. 
I don't know to what extent, but I think the plot twist is definitely coming out during the battle. The headache gets stronger as I near the church. <laughs> Maybe that's the headache. The archer sense! It's just like when I was looking for Tosaka, but I avoid thinking about that. Of course, I avoid thinking about it. Oh, you're back on your old habits. At least you're consciously avoiding thinking about it. In timeline one, you were unconsciously avoiding it. Now you have to consciously avoiding it because you've character developed past unconsciously avoiding it. So that is the headache that led him to Tosaka theoretically in, earlier on, you know, after he went to the church and then, you know, I reloaded the save, did another thing, and they ended up going back to the church anyway. It's because of the headaches. It's an archer connection and a Tosaka connection. Fair, fair, fair. Oh, you know, casual time travel headaches. The morning light is gray. Oh boy. <laughs> it seems like all cra all the crazy revelations happen at the church. Um, although in timeline one, uh, at the church, there was some, I would say, I don't want to call this a genuine, an ungenuine crazy revelation. I'm not, I'm sure Shiro is Archer, but... Uh, in timeline one, you know, stuff like, oh, the orphans in the basin. Didn't see that one coming. Um, Lancer being Kiri's servant really threw me off, but I think I also screwed myself a little bit because I expected it to just be a Gilgamesh connection. But, um, uh, so I'm wondering if there's anything more than just Shiro as Archer in the future, or if I've just called the big one, as it were. <clears throat> we'll see. Obscuring the dawn's brightness. Hmm. The sun is blocked off, obscuring the dawn's brightness. Is that a metaphor for the fact that um, that in the future, the sun rising should be the hero rising, but instead it's obscured. Shiro's future is obscured by the archer who becomes all cynical and stuff. The sky above is gloomy. The sky is more gray than black, and it reminds me of that time ten years ago. There's also maybe the metaphor that now that we know Castor is kind of tragic, she's not necessarily um, the black cloud that we want to defeat, as it were. She's more gray. It's more of a gray... It's not... I wouldn't call it gray and gray morality. It's gray and white. So, you know, she's kind of black by process of elimination, but it reminds me of that time ten years ago. It should rain soon. Mm, hopefully it does. Will it rain before the fire? Is that what this is leading to? Will this incident end with a big fire? The fire that was in Archer's flashback. Um, uh, the second fire, as it were. The second coming of the fire, where he wishes on the grail to save everyone. Is that how this timeline ends? That might be a bit abrupt. Because um, I am expecting this to be more of a prelude to the finale. Since if it's really the finale, then a lot's going to have to happen. Because Shirinji and Gilgamesh are doing something. But, hmm. It should rain soon. An impure gray sky. Hmm. Beneath it stands that man. Oh boy, which man? <laughs> I knew you would come, considering your personality. Oh, you won't even call him Archer, huh? <laughs> Maybe you won't call him Archer because you've already subconsciously realized he's not Archer. You know his name, it's Shiro. I knew you would come, considering your personality. So you're the first blood, huh? Okay. We're going to have to start by fighting you. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder, wonder, wonder how this will go down. I doubt they're going to jump on the twist straight away. They generally leave the twist till after we get under the church. So we might have an initial fight where Lancer holds him off and then we sneak past him. And then we circle back around to Archer later on, probably. I knew you would come, considering your personality. He stares at her with cool eyes. <laughs> of course, you're focusing on Rin. But Rin and Shiro are similar in that way. After all, Rin did summon you, Archer. Dash, dash, dash. Tosaka doesn't say anything and stares back at him. So, what is the plan? So, what's the plan you've prepared? You're not the type to come and attack without one. Hmm. I guess that's fair. Oh. Her plans tend to be a bit loose, though. She's good at improvising, so I think she leaves a lot open for interpretation. <laughs> Still, uh, she has the general strategy of Lancer will distract you and Saber, which is not very deep, 
But, you know, it's something, if that's what you mean by plan. Ah, okay, yeah, that is what you mean by plan. All right, that's a pretty loose for a plan. It's more of a guideline, but okay. Yeah, I'll be fighting you. I'm surprised you made a contract with a new servant already. Hey, you cheated on me first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I didn't know that you were, you know, I think, trying to save everyone, I would almost be mad at you making such a joke. But I know you're trying to save everyone, so it can be kind of a funny talk, where we just enjoy each other's company despite being enemies. <laughs> Uh, man, I know I'm one to talk, but you're pretty fickle. Switching sides may have been a good idea after all. <laughs> of course that's gonna piss Shiro off, but I don't think Grin's gonna mind. Dash dash. Yep. <laughs> I don't care. Shiro, don't let him provoke you. <laughs> she stops me, still staring at Archer. But it's obvious looking at her face. What's obvious? She knows he's baiting her, but his words still hurt. Is she? Ba is he baiting her though? I think you're projecting your own thoughts, Jiro. I think she trusts him on some level, or wants to. Heh. <laughs> I didn't like you from the start. But it seems you're rotten to the core. Okay, that makes sense for Lancer to say that. He obviously doesn't know uh, all what's going on, but for Archer to switch sides would be very bad. He uh, Lancer would be would not like that because he considers himself very honorable. He doesn't like his master at all, even though Archer likes his master. And yet Lancer is still sticking with his master despite la master despite how much he doesn't like him. So definitely would rub Lancer the wrong way. Ah. Joke theory. Maybe you save everyone ideal except himself also applies to all versions of himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. I can save everyone, but I don't have to save my past version of Shiro. He sucks, because I suck. <laughs> I suck, therefore he sucks. <laughs> uh, it seems you're rotten to the core. Of course they hate each other, because they, he hates himself. Uh. Oh. And there we go again, showing uh, how smart, how smart Shiro can be when he stops, or when he stops, uh, <laughs> I suck, therefore I am, Where he, when he starts caring more, uh, or, or I don't know, because I'd say even future Archer Shiro definitely, definitely has his issues, I think that's a whole theme they've been running with, but he's still, um, He's still usually, I'll say usually, uh, quicker to the uptake than past Shiro. Oh, does betrayal irritate you, Lancer? And you're not even the one who got betrayed, how faithful of you. I'm, I'm not supporting the young lady over there. I just don't like servants like you. <laughs> you preferred him more when he was a master? Because you said you kind of were getting along with me earlier when I was talking about Rin. <laughs> There's the tried and true archer cynicism. A hero's pride, huh? Man, everyone says the same thing. Even Castor had such a ridiculous thing. What good is honor once you're dead? <laughs> had such a ridiculous thing. Uh, I assume Castor's still around. It wouldn't make sense for her to get defeated off screen. So I believe you mean when she was still alive, she still had it. To what extent you mean? She embraced being a villain because people called her a villain? Because it would tarnish her pride too much to try to stay being a hero? If that's what you mean, I can sort of see what you mean. Shoujiki. 
That shows, uh, again, Shiro's mentality of hating himself. He still considers Caster more of a hero than he considers himself. I honestly can't understand how you people think. Lumping Lancer together with Caster. You don't have to. I'll make it easy so you don't have to think about it. Mm. There's no more need for words. All there remains is the intent to kill. Of course, the man with uh, no ego and no pride doesn't understand why the there's these heroes would do so much for pride and honor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not why he's a hero for sure. If there's any pride he has, it's for Kiritsugu's ideal, but none for himself or his image. With lancers sharp and archers calm. Mmm. Dash, dash, dash. They're about 10 meters apart. The confrontation of the knights in blue and red is just like that night. Yeah, that's enjoyable. I do like the contrast of, you know, before Archer was the good guy, Lancer was the bad guy. And here Lancer's the good guy, Archer's the bad guy. I enjoy turnarounds like that. Um, it's not perfect because I'm still pretty darn sure this is all part of Archer's plan to save everyone. But uh, uh, on the surface level, it's, it's a neat turnaround. <laughs> Lancer. <laughs> now she's the one ordering him all around. Tosaga calls out to the blue back. Mm, now, yep, his back is the one facing them. You two go inside. I'll catch up once I beat him. <laughs> uh, you being overconfident, Lancer? <laughs> Debatably, you might have beaten him last time, but he was still getting the grip of uh, who he was and his memories back then. And I still don't think he's fully grasped who he is. But I think he's got enough of a grasp of himself. He's going to give you a, a more of a run for your money this time. Archer's plan to save everyone, Tia. <laughs> I know, but Lancer, Archer is really strong. Actually, Shiro, not that bad. What are you going to say? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> is that what she was going to say? Maybe something like that. Yeah, I'll go easy on him. I need him to crawl and beg your forgiveness. <laughs> you're actually okay with that, Lancer? Or you think you're good enough that you can beat him without having to kill him and get him to crawl and beg for your forgiveness? Or are you just saying that to ease your worries, but you're not going to really worry about it once you're in the thick of the fight? Mm, I don't know, Lancer. That sounds like it sounds like you'd be pretty unhonorable to say that to her and not follow through with it. <laughs> He speaks without turning, grinning at Archer. <laughs> you really think uh, Archer's that weak, Rin? Arigato. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Rin. Wearing your feelings right on your sleeve. Future, past, you're clearly madly in love. Oh! I'm glad you're the one who came to help us. <laughs> Despite all the snarking earlier, huh? <laughs> well, he is a shipper for Shiro and Rin, it seems, so... <laughs> uh. We go around the two as we head to the church. Of course, yeah, she has to let off her dairy just a little bit before we uh, possibly leave him forever. Despite how much sun she's been until now, you know, the classic sun dairy move. The guard Archer lets us through unchallenged. Hey, he did an assassin. <laughs> No, he has to let us through, because he's got to focus on Lancer. Fair, fair, fair. Archer is already confronting Lancer. Lancer will pierce him if he lets us distract him. Yeah, he doesn't have that one-shot Gaybolg still, so... He can either attack us and leave himself open to Lancer, or he can fight Lancer and let us go. Rin's harem the route. <laughs> Both Shiro's and Q? Uh. Q is definitely one of my favorite side characters. <laughs> side character? What are you talking about? He's super important. <laughs> it's not like he has a habit of, you know, being around in the prologue and then disappearing to the climax. What? And even if he does, 
<laughs> Even if he does do that, <laughs> that can still be a very important role. If he really is guarding this place, the choice should be obvious. We run around the courtyard and open the door to the church without hesitation. Mm. Behind us, the fight starts. Man, this is troublesome. I wonder if we're going to get some multiple perspectives here, if this is going to be more of a they off-screen it. I could see this being a they off-screen it. Um, because I don't think there's much stake in, see in seeing the conclusion of this fight when we don't understand, uh, we don't know the, you know, twist of Archer yet. Um, so I assume they're going to off-screen it at most. Uh, partway through, they might end up getting flung into the middle of our conflict, or we get flung into their conflict. Just because, you know, the only time they've ever shown multiple battles at once was the Saber Gilgamesh Shiro Kire thing, and with there, there was importance. Because, you know, there was importance to Saber actually finally beating Kire, but... Kire, Gilgamesh. Here, though, I don't think there's that much importance regardless of who wins this fight. It's more of a distraction than anything. Obviously, it's important if one of them gets killed off screen, but uh, <laughs> uh, is it really important if uh, Lancer gets killed off screen, or is it only important if Archer gets killed off screen? Man, this is troublesome. What is Lancer? Well, I can't go easy after she makes a face like that. Ooh, what's your master's plan? That's troubling, right? She's a great master, but I'm not one that can readily betray my master. What was your master's plan, hmm? What did Kirei tell you to do? Did he tell you to kill him? Did you lie to Rin? I guess it's acceptable if it's for your own master's plan. You're too easy going, Lancer. Do you know the saying, grass is always greener on the other side of the fence? I have heard of that saying, but like, I still don't think I know what it means. I still don't think I know what it means. Hold on, I'm gonna Google that. What does it mean? Grass is greener on the other side, meaning... Definition of the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Used to say that the things a person does not have always seem... The, per, the things a person does not have always seem more appealing than things he or she... Oh, I understand. Okay, I know that metaphor. Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I've heard the term, but I didn't know what it meant. Now that I know what it meant, I'm like, oh, okay. I get it. Greener on the other side of the... F oh, I understand how that means that. Okay. <laughs> How does it apply to this situation? <laughs> what are you saying? How does it apply to this situation exactly? You're too easy going, Lancer. Do you know the saying, Grasso is greater on the other side of the fence? What? Are you saying Lancer is... Oh! He's implying that um, Lancer is wishing he could have been Rin's uh, servant instead, and he's regretting being Kirei's servant. And then Archer is like, oh, well, you know... You're too easy going, Lancer. If you were Rin servant, it might be just as bad. <laughs> Basically, he's bad talking Rin. <laughs> uh, in his own Shiro Sun way, I would say. What are you saying? No. <laughs> There's no way I'd know such a phrase. Mm, I guess Lancer's retort here is that um, he never, he doesn't bother thinking like that. He enjoys the moment. Sure, he's got a grody master, but he's got a grody master because of his uh, honor, and he keeps to that. He could turn to uh, Rin's side, but um, as much as he can enjoy his interactions with Rin, um, if he had Rin as a master, he would have had Rin as a master, and he's not going to waste too much time uh, thinking about that. Mm. I think is his response to that. There's no way I know such a phrase. And now we cut away. Yeah. Alright. 
We don't have much time. We'll beat Casper before the match is decided. Lancer is the king of cutaway fights. Um, and it's perfect, too. Usually, like, you know, when you see a fight and you cut away, I'm like, I want to see the rest of that fight. But then the Lancer fight with Gilgamesh, the Lancer fight with um, with uh, Archer, both times has been like, oh, that works as a cutaway fight. I don't have to see that. <laughs> Lancer even died off screen. It wasn't a big deal because it made sense. You knew where that fight was going. In this case, though, I think Lancer dying off screen would be a little more unexpected. But uh, the, the fact that they cut away still makes sense and works with the narrative. I don't know. Something about Lancer. <laughs> He's just perfect for the cutaway fights. <laughs> We don't have much time. We'll beat Caster before their match is decided. Mm. Um, actually, though, let's go ahead and... Yeah, here works. We're going to make a intermission here, I would say. Cut away, Lancer. Ah, uh, Lancer. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Oh, no more talking, just fighting? <laughs> uh, I know, let's cut the talk from now on. Um, you're sure you're okay with fighting Caster alone, right, Tosaka? He's still calling her Tosaka. Maybe he switches to Rin when he accepts that he's Shiro from the future. I feel like he's gonna switch to Rin because Archer calls her Rin. I just feel like that's important, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be thoroughly cornered, but don't help me. Oh. <laughs> you can just concentrate on keeping Kazuki-sensei away as long as possible. You want to focus on your own individual battles? Are you saying that because you, your plan involves the jewels and possibly has collateral damage if Shiro gets in the way? Or, I mean, or is it that and or is it a combination of that and uh, um, you think Shiro might throw you off your game if you're too close by while you're fighting because worrying about him might throw you off your game? Possibly a combination. Unless he rejects calling her Rin because Archer calls her that and he doesn't want to associate with that. Maybe that's why he doesn't call her Rin right now. Is that subconsciously he thinks that he might, you know, he relates himself to Archer. Archer calls her Rin and it's like, I don't want to call her Rin. I don't want to be like that. Maybe if he can start to accept that even if that this version of Shiro didn't end up ideal, he himself is not ideal as he is now, um, and then start calling her Rin. Or at least accept that's why he hasn't been calling her Rin. Possibly. Um, you can just keep uh, concentrate on keeping Kazuki away as long as possible. We go past the main area and head to the door leading to the courtyard. Uh. So we're still not bothering with Assassin. Interesting. Okay, so I think there's a couple ideas of what's going to happen here. Um, it's possible we kind of sort of beat Caster, but she gets away. It's possible we kill Kazuki, but Caster lives. Um, and then Caster becomes heartbroken, decides to do something drastic, and she does it at the Rito Temple. So we have to go to Rito Temple, and that's how Assassin comes back into the picture. It's also possible Assassin found a way to abandon his post at the Rito Temple with some kind of help from an outside source, maybe. And he's going to betray Caster now? Um, maybe. I don't know. They're definitely building up to an assassin Caster betrayal, I think. Though maybe that might not happen in this timeline. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay. We go past the main area and head to the door leading to the courtyard. Maybe what happens is that Shiro and Kazuki are fighting. Caster and Rin are fighting. It, Rin thought she would win, but Caster actually starts... Uh, yeah, Rin starts winning, and she's about to make a fatal move to take out Caster. And then Kazuki jumps in front of it and takes the fatal move instead so that um, he, he's taken out, but Caster lives. And then she goes, no, but I loved you! And then she's like, I have to fucking take my revenge, but I don't like anything anymore. And does something crazy and goes to the temple. And we have to follow her. And she's done something she can't control. And now it's out of control. And then um, Archer Shiro wants to stop that or something along those lines, maybe. And I would assume Gilgamesh Shinji aren't going to be involved in this. I think they might show up at the... Assuming she retreats to the temple and there's a further battle there, I would think Gilgamesh gets involved in that battle, but 
I would think so. She might, Gilgamesh might interfere here, but I'm definitely not expecting it. We go past the main area and head to the door leading to the courtyard. Kire would have some plan, and he's involved, so he might show up and drop some bombs. Maybe. You know, metaphorical bombs, as it were. Like, I killed Rin's father kind of bombs. Hmm. We go past the main area and head to the door leading to the courtyard. I won't hesitate if Tosaka says so. But I don't know if it's possible for me to back Tosaka up, even if she's cornered. <laughs> it is possible, Shiro. Stop doubting yourself. In the moment. Like, do you remember when you whipped out those swords against Kazuki the first time? You were believing in yourself because you felt like you had to. Because if you didn't, you were like, there's no way out of this situation unless I believe in myself. You know, hone that. Hone that ability to actually believe in yourself for a bit. <laughs> Uh, my opponent's Kazuki. I won't be able to dodge his attacks if I'm paying attention to Tosaka. That's fair, too. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I guess you don't want to overbelieve. But at the same time, you know, for you, Shiro, I, I disagree. For you, Shiro, you do want to overbelieve because you, you are unconfident in yourself too much. Caster's presence is getting closer. <laughs> your mental health equals your power level. Oh, boy. I think his mental health is related to how much Avalon is helping him out. So I think there is some association there. Caster's presence is getting closer. The church is filled with her magical energy as she must not be hiding her powers anymore. You know, what point is there? Most every other, most every master and servant is accounted for, you know, except for like Lancer. And uh, I mean, Berserker already got taken off, out and Caster almost certainly would have felt that. Um, I don't know if she figured out Gilgamesh is running around, if that's the case, but, hmm. I bet she already knows about our raid. Most likely, yeah. Does that mean this is some kind of trap? Maybe she wants to get Shiro, she wants to capture Shiro because she finds Shiro's powers amusing? Quite possibly. Why do you only have one line? Is it because the second line is being used by Archer right now? Oh, no, the second line there. Okay. I carefully knit together the illusion using eight steps. Eight steps, as in the steps of the Archer, as it were? How the Archer has eight steps or whatever? Or is this actual magic eight steps? I think the Archery thing has eight steps. Anyways. I'm getting the hang of it. His swords are in my hands within a minute. Oh, you just do it now. Before you even enter the fight. Okay. And you're just going to keep them hanging around? Because until now, you've just, like, gotten them and, you know, had them for not much time. So, this is definitely an improvement, actually. In Timeline 1, Shiro never would have sword birthed something and then had it around for a while. They were always like, I got Caliburn! Oh, Caliburn's gone. Um, so, this is an upgrade. Dash, dash. I feel a light headache. Yep, those time travel headaches coming back. <laughs> Even though I'm getting used to it, it takes a toll on my body. Projection is damaging my body deeper than I realize. Is it? But I mean, if you're realizing that it's damaging your body deeper than I realize, then how are you not realizing it? Ellipses. Uh, of course, she's getting freaked out by it. Or she's worried about it, as it were. Hmm? Question mark? Was it my imagination? I think Tosaka hung her head for a second. I mean, it makes sense. She's seeing you do those that sword projecting, despite how much it might hurt you. And you're just she's just thinking about the relation between the two uh, archers. Why did you say, "Oh no"? Okay, look, I think <laughs> maybe it's a Tom's Tom thing, but you know, I'm triggered to think, "Oh no," and check my thing, my streaming, and it's fine. It's fine. Nothing went wrong. Oh, you're oh no in universe. Like, don't say oh no. Say something else for something goes bad in universe. <laughs> I assume my stream dies when someone says, oh, no. Ugh. I think Tosaka hung her head for a second. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hurt you so much, you get gray hairs and, and tan hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that's what it's doing. Maybe if he keeps doing it so much, he will start actually physically transforming. But that wouldn't make sense because, but, but it wouldn't make sense because if he just grows up to be Archer in the future, it's that's different from him having some kind of weird connection with a servant that's otherwise unrelated to him. Um, 
that would be him becoming that version just because that's who he is in the future. The white hair from stress, maybe. The tan skin doesn't really make sense. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's something he would just get naturally over time. Anyways, we go through the darkness. We run down the stairs and come out into an open area. And after that, we jump down into the temple like I did before. Mm. Wait, you didn't split up. For a second, I thought you said you split up. I think Tosaka hung her head for a second. No, okay, you didn't split up. She's just all like, ooh. We run down the stairs and come into an open area. And after that, we jump down the temple like I did before. Here we go. <laughs> Who needs stairs? Oh, you guys are like monkeys jumping down like that. I don't know why I'm in such a hurry, but use the stairs if you're human. Joke's on you, I'm a servant from the future past. Good old basement. Last time we saw this basement, it wasn't much anything special. I mean, I guess we saw the saber torturing. That was kind of kinky and fun. And I guess we had the caster flashback. But you know, this is the real <laughs> kinky basement. Ugh. We land in the temple. This was supposed to be a surprise attack, but Caster greets us with composure. Of course, she saw it coming. And there's Kazuki. Okay. So yes, we're the pair. Shiorn ran against Caster and Kazuki. <laughs> uh, that's what almost what it was going to be anyways. It was just going to be Archer and Rin against Caster and Kazuki with Saber as well. So all that's changed is that Shiro got weaker because he's not his future self anymore. So Archer should have some kind of big plan here. That, or, <clears throat> or he was just trying to protect Rin and hoping she would stay out of it, but knowing she probably wouldn't. Because the situation has just gotten worse, if anything. Because they've given more time for Saber to potentially be controlled. Um, and so this is just, yeah, instead of stronger Shiro and Rin versus uh, Caster and Kazuki, it's weaker Shiro and Rin versus Caster and Kazuki. So theoretically, this is just a worse situation than it would have been otherwise, unless Archer asked for the agreement because he already sensed Shiro was nearby and he knew Shiro would complicate the situation. Or because he sensed Rin's mental state was wrong and Rin's mental state is better now. That's probably also true. Dash, 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 dash. Kazuki Soichiro is standing next to Caster. Hopefully Archer puts something in during the time to just stop Saber from being controlled. That might be it. I'm sure he's up to something. Maybe it's that. Maybe he had some way of being like, yeah, Saber, you're not going to be pooped anymore. Suichiro is standing next to Caster. I don't feel en any enmity or bloodlust from him. We still haven't gotten back to the Issei trap. We still haven't gotten back to that. Sh they've got to find out about that at some point that's not a bad ending, right? What? I mean, I guess they do. It's just been so long. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. Um... The fact that even if, like, the general knowledge they give you from the Taiga Dojo that they seem to be giving um, is something that never comes up, the fact that Issei specifically was trapped, I feel like, would come up in some form. I don't know. Shiro doesn't even know that's a thing. Yes! I know he doesn't know, but it'd be so weird if you can go through the whole game without never finding out. Especially because we only found out through Issei anyway, because we just asked in the different order? I don't know. Ah. Anyways, I don't feel any enmity or bloodlust from him. Just thinking about it because it's been so long. And I do think the fact that, uh, on a similar note, the fact that we haven't gotten back to Ayako, uh, similar to the fact that we never got back to Sakura in Timeline 1 after Shinji died, and I want to be like, what's Sakura's reaction? Uh, I don't know. It feels, uh, I would call it some kind of flaw, I think. Um, you could just say, oh, it's foreshadowing. You're, in the next timeline, they'll get to it. And you'll be like, aha, I expected that. However, I do think that there could be some way to hide the plot twist, as it were. Give us, you can leave hinting for the fact that there's something more going on, but give us a fake answer for what's really going on. The fact that we never got back to Ayako, but clearly something happened there, to me does feel like I think it's just a flaw. I think there's a way to hide whatever the plot twist is without just straight up never getting back to her. But. Oh. I don't feel any enmity or bloodlust from him. 
That's his battle posture. His clear murderous intent is hiding the scariness of that man. Mm. Maybe they possibly still do get back to it. Shinji is still running around. It would just be super delayed if they do at this point. It's clear murderous intent. Sakura's... Re I know, I know. Sakura was in the epilogue. But that's the thing. I even talked about it back then. They kept off from Sakura for the entire thing until the epilogue. And by then, there's so much possibility for stuff to happen between Shinji's death and the ending that who knows what was going on by the epilogue. Things could have changed. There could have been drastic stuff. I feel like they only held off that long because there is a Sakura plot twist. But And I think something similar going is going on with Ayako at this point. Yeah. His clear murderous intent is hiding the scariness of the man. In that regard, he's more like an assassin than servant assassin. Well, I did say a while back that I'm, I believe that he is a former assassin that opted out of being an assassin for some reason and um, then just tried to chill at the temple. I don't know exactly what opted him out, but I do think that he was an assassin in the past. Sabro's on top of the altar. Also, you agree. Assassin feels way too honorable to be like a normal assassin. <laughs> well, he isn't a fictional one, I guess. Caster's just not got a very good imagination for assassins. Sabro's on top of the altar. Still being controlled? Still being not controlled, I mean? She's just like she was two days ago. You're really holding off on going all the way, huh, Caster? You're really savoring the injection. Saber hangs there, her head bowed. Dash, dash, dash. I'm relieved we made it, but on the other hand, I'm worried about why she's so quiet. Hmm. Maybe that's the trap. Maybe Saber is controlled, and that's why she's so quiet. Or, you know, she could just be, you know, super worn down at this point, and she's on the verge of being controlled. I think Saber was in pain before. She was shivering and gasping, resisting Caster's magic with all her might. Yeah. So it's possible she's a trap and she's already controlled. But she's dead silent now. If she was a trap, I suppose she could fake pain, but uh, it might be hard to fake. I guess they might not necessarily need the fake pain, though. Caster could induce real pain in her despite her already be con being controlled. That's just kind of mean, though. Um, and I guess Caster is faking being mean. She's playing the part of being mean, so hard to say. Ellipses. I have a bad feeling. Mm. It's great that Assassin's not here, but if this bad feeling comes true, it won't get out of here alive. <laughs> oh, that Saber's already controlled? That it's a trap? Getting that same bad feeling I am, Shiro? <laughs> And she says it with all the confidence. <laughs> as much confidence as she's ever mustered. I'm here, Caster. I thought about it thoroughly, but I've decided to have you eliminated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as if she's in control. Which, I mean, she does like playing that part. Although, for Caster, I think there's more serious reasons why Caster has to play the part of being in control. <laughs> <laughs> You're an eyesore. You get in my way. You annoy me. <laughs> Not just you get in my way, you also annoy me. And I hate the way you look. You're like some backwoods hag with that purple robe of yours. <laughs> of course. Rin's gotta go all in. Of course, she has no idea of Caster's tragic story, but... Uh, if anything, this just further incentivizes Caster to be more evil. This is exactly what got Caster to be, be evil in the first place. Was people being like, oh, Caster, you're just so terrible, aren't you? And she's like, well, fine, if you call me terrible, I guess I'll be terrible. So, you know, it just feeds into that. Uh... Tosaka insults Caster, hoping to break her composure. No, this wouldn't break her composure. This will just make her... Um, fire back all the more because Caster wants to maintain her own persona, keeping control of her own shit. She has a similar thing of keeping control, similar to Rin. Um, I think the circumstances are very different, but they have a similar, they both feel the need to maintain control of the situation. 
She slowly closes the distance between them as she talks, radiating confidence she probably doesn't feel. Mmm. That's good, uh, I would say. I mean, I, I don't think you always need uh, a parallel, necessarily, between your main character and your villain, but it is sort of a common adage that, oh, having uh, some sort of parallel between the good guy and the bad guy and how they both could have ended up in similar situations uh, can be good. And I think, I do agree, it can be good. I don't think that's the only way uh, to do villains, but... <laughs> mm. Caster could be seen as sort of an evil Rin in a way. Dash, dash, dash. I shouldn't be concerned about Saber either. <laughs> no magic start flying. Rin's already roasting Caster. <laughs> oh, look at that. You do have fire magic like your father. Tosaka is facing Caster by going counterclockwise. So I lock, walk clockwise. Mmm. Oh, that sounds like a cool. That sounds like a cool anime moment where you see them both walking, whereas Kazuki and Caster just stand in the center. I can see the cool camera angles now. Caster Kazuki. If we are to separate them, we have to attack them from different sides and isolate our enemies. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rin's plan to beat Caster. I'm gonna roast her so hard that she'll die. Uh, I don't think that's how roasting works. Not that kind of roasting. Well, letting you go seems to have given the wrong impression. Why are Magi so reckless nowadays? No wonder Archer gave up on you. Mmm. And she, yeah, fires back in a thrickly manner. I'm surprised she actually looks kind of perturbed by that. As if Rin's ro roasting actually had a slight impact. Mmm. I knew she'd fire back, but I guess it does make some sense that she's still annoyed at, um, you know, she was annoyed, you know, to be called those things in the first place back in the day, so, uh, I guess it doesn't, it's not too surprising for her to be annoyed even still by that. But the firing back, I guess, is inevitable. No wonder Archer gave up on you. Mmm. Tosaka's insults must have worked as Castor is glaring at her. Mm. Worked? Depends on what you mean by worked. Get under her skin? Make her lose her uh, control? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. If it did work, then good on Rin for her confidence, uh, for her overconfidence playing a, p a key role in the victory. <laughs> uh. If you're only appropriately confident, we have not, we have not have succeeded. Therefore, being overconfident was being the correct amount of confidence. I move while she does so. I move to the other side of Tosaka to a place where I can attack Caster from behind. You're going to attack Caster even though you know you're supposed to be going after Kazuki? You sure, Shiro? I guess going, giving the impression you'll attack Caster forces Kazuki to pay attention to you. That's fair. Dash, dash, dash. Kazuki watches me in silence. I thought so. There's no way that this man would uh, not notice our trick. Is it really a trick? You guys walk to each opposite ends of each other, and you call that a trick? <laughs> it's barely a concept. Uh, to uh, paraphrase, you know, that Gog meme. That, that works, right? Gog? There's technically a T in there. You could call it Gotk, but I, I just like calling it Gog. There's no way this man would, notice, would not notice our trick. I liked calling it Gag for a while, actually. Even though I know there's an O there, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. I liked calling it Gag, as in G-A. Guardian starts with G-A. So then I would skip that to the next G and skip the O and just call it Gag. I like to call it Gag and Gag 2 for short. There's no way this man would not notice our trick. Kazuki knows what's going on. That we are trying to isolate our enemies and that Tosaka has some plan. Does Tosaka really have a plan? I, I think, I think you know, it's just a, a matter of she has jewels and she plans to unload them. Which I guess is a plan. But I think it's, I think she more has guidelines than an actual plan. Even with that in mind, he's letting Caster do as she wishes. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Rin will prove me wrong and she'll have a full-on plan. <laughs> That'd be exciting. 
It's not that Kazuki is controlled by Caster. He just trusts her, question mark, or wants to protect her, question mark. He is acting of his own free will. Mm. But still, his passivity is like that of a puppet. Puppet. I don't know if I'd call him a puppet. Um, because if it was a puppet, you know, <laughs> Caster wouldn't love her puppet. I guess you can love your puppet, to be fair. But, mm. still, <clears throat> when your puppet disobeys you, you usually get angry at your puppet. Whereas Caster, you know, doesn't seem to mind much when he goes against things. She just gets kind of worried and flustered. A servant skilled in magic is the backup. And a master skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Their roles are reversed, and I think their natures are reversed as well. Oh? Nature as in who's in control and who's not? I guess I'd agree to an extent, but I think their relationships are closer to yours and, uh, um, closer to what? In a way, yours and Rin's, uh, in a way, uh, how <laughs> you initially wanted your relationship to be with Rin in the future as Archer. You as Archer wanted to take control. Um, Rin didn't allow that, though. Um, but I think it's similar in that uh, Caster is the one maybe giving the orders, but Kazuki still has um, uh, uh, reign, as it were, and can definitely object to situations. Their natures are reversed as well. Caster seeks the Holy Grail frantically, while the Master protects her without question. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not uncommon for a servant to really want the Holy Grail, but it's true the servant usually protects the Master. And that's what you wanted initially, Shiro, for Saber. Um, in Timeline 1, you wanted to protect Saber, who wanted the Grail. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, almost what you kind of sort of wanted. It's almost like Kazuki is a sort of another version of Shiro in that case. Um, it's a version of Shiro that more parallels his self from Timeline 1 than Timeline 2, I would say. But if Caster is a sort of Rin parallel, then sure, Kazuki is a sort of Shiro parallel. Um, he's protecting his servant and hopes that she can get the wish she wants because he kind of likes her. And that does parallel Timeline 1 Shiro, wanting to protect Saber so that she can get the uh, wish she wants, even though Shiro wasn't quite competent enough to do it. Are saying the same thing as initial timeline one, Shiro? I shall fight in the front lines, uh, you stay back. <laughs> Should have been a big hint. Yeah. yeah. That's true, yeah. When Archer initially tried to give that proposal to Rin. Uh, I guess that does, is telling that even in the far future, Shiro's still, you know, kind of a sexist pig. <laughs> dash, dash, dash. That makes me think. What if Caster was the master and Kazuki was the servant who protected her? Maybe they wouldn't have fallen so low if that were the case. Oh? What are you implying, Shiro? If Caster was the master and Kazuki was the servant, they wouldn't have fallen so low. You mean they wouldn't have done things that were as bad in that case? Um, I think, yeah, there's an argument to be made there for sure. If Kazuki was the master, or the servant, Kazuki would be willing to do bad things, but I don't think he'd go out of his way to do them necessarily. He's more uh, neutral, I would say. He's willing to cast, help Castro because she's doing bad things, but I don't think he'd ever go to his way to do them. Castro, if she was the master, uh, you see, it's debatable though. Like, if she's the master, under what circumstances? Has she still been through a similarly shitty life that would lead her to be as bad as she is? Uh, it, it's hard to just swap their roles and say, what if, without more context? Maybe you're just relating it to your own self and how you wanted to be the one to protect Saber in Timeline 1 to some extent. You wanted to protect your uh, waifu. Dash, dash, dash. Tosaka glances at me. It means our positions are perfect. Are they? Then, the match will be settled when either one of us attacks. Oh, okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, so I guess the, I guess I was wrong. This isn't going to be a super long conflict. All right, guys, we can get through this pretty quickly. It doesn't matter if we get defeated or if Tosaka beats Caster before that. Our fight will end right here. I somehow doubt that it will end right in one moment, but sure, sure, sure. Let's start. Let's start. 
Well, let's start. This is the third time I fought you. I'll finally settle this right here. Does this really count as the third time you fought her? You barely fought her when Shiro protected you from Kazuki and Archer betrayed you. I guess you fought her a little bit when you were initially attacking Kazuki. But then what about the time when she stole S S Saber? That's arguably four encounters. But I would argue that the first one, the one where you tried to attack Kazuki, was the only one where you kind of sort of fought her. Which is, means this is the second time you fought. So I think this is either the second or fourth. I don't think I'd ever count this as the third, to be honest. But anyways, let's settle this right here. Tozalaga takes a step toward Caster. You're talking big. I doubt this, but please do not tell me you honestly believe you can beat me. She has to believe it. She needs to have the confidence to believe it. Uh, just like you have to have the confidence to believe that yes, you are this bad of a person. だとしたら腕比べどころの話じゃないわ。今回も見逃してあげるから、まずその少年を直してらっしゃいな。<laughs> Is this you seeing some relatability in Rincaster? That you actually want to let her go? I think at this point you wouldn't really, but uh <laughs> and you and you know that that's how she'll respond, but uh you're still maybe some subconscious part of you is actually uh recognizing the connection. In that case, you don't even need to fight. I'll let you go again so that you can fix that personality of yours. Of course I can beat you. Mmm, Caster doesn't like that because she's always had some her own self-confidence issues. Interesting. Is Rin talking this way just because she's trying to have her overconfidence? Or does she know something about Media? We never learned from Berserker, despite the fact they came from the same thing and we were supposed to think about the thing thing. We never learned anything about that. So I think you just naturally have to either have to be just saying this cause or you learn from her that Caster was a third rate Magus, in which case it's the first time we're learning that you knew that she was a third rate Magus from her backstory. Which, I mean, is she even a third rate Magus? I think there's a debate to be made. She thinks she's a third rate Magus. Would the rest of the world say she's a third rate Magus? Isn't that right? There's no way a first-class Magus like me would lose to a third-class Magus like you. So, <laughs> I see. I guess it can't be helped. It seems I need to discipline that arrogant mouth of yours, little lady. Hmm. <laughs> Calling Midia third eight Magus. They get ready at the same time. Yeah, that was a little bit of a fun get ready. I wish we could have uh, stopped on that screen for a little bit. Oh, well. Meanwhile, with a few mirrors between them, they act like mirror images. Meanwhile, are we going to start fighting Kazuki or are they going to fire their shots first? That's the signal. Oh, okay. Apparently there's a signal. It's almost a real plan. I attack the defenseless caster. Oh, boy. Ellipses. I'm surprised. So Shiro's just had Archer swords out for this long, huh? It seems a little bit surprising that he's had him out for this this long. Um, that's a long time. He could have just projected them right now for full effect, right? Maybe it's lack his lacking confidence that he's actually able to do it. That he felt he had to do it beforehand to make sure he truly could. Even though I think that um, wanes on his overall power supply a bit. Uh, still though. <laughs> I attack the defenseless caster, ellipses, and of course I'm stopped by Kazuki. <gasps> I wonder if Shira's gonna whip out the bone sword at some point. I would assume so, because, you know, it's, it's his sword from the future. He's already whipped out the yin yang swords. I'm assuming at some point he'll get to the bone sword. Maybe not till he learns that he's Archer, though. Hmm. <clears throat> will he do it in this timeline, though, or are they gonna save for timeline three? I don't think there's much point in saving it too much. I feel it makes more sense for him to maybe whip it out in the climax of this timeline. He did whip out Avalon, the climax of Timeline 1, so maybe that means there's going to be a similar type of thing where he whips out um, uh, the Bone Sword in this timeline. Although, if the climax is too similar, it might be a bit redundant, but... Of course, I'm stopped by Kazuki. The ghost-like assassin in front of me. 
I don't even know. Okay. What properties do we know about? Wait, hold on. Do we have? Oh, uh, we got a bunch more weapons now. <laughs> we got a bunch of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Gilgamesh's weapons. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Cal Kaldbolg 2. How much do we even know about this? This is said to be the demonic sword possessed by the hero of Island Fergus, but as the two in the name suggests, it is a different weapon from Fergus' sword. An archer has applied improvements practically to himself. It's no phantasm considered the natural enemy of QQ Lane. Uh, maybe he might use that a bit against QQ Lane, given that he's fighting him right now. The wielder of Catalbolg uh, uh, is Ulsterborn. Um, QQ Lane has duty uh, to be defeated once by this sword due to his geist. Does that mean he's going to be defeated by Archer? <laughs> uh, right. And then, okay, so we got a bunch of um, Gilgamesh's swords. Durandal, Holy Sword favored by Roland, the Paladin in the middle, blah, blah, blah. Harpy, another Gilgamesh sword. Vajra, Gilgamesh sword. We've got all this, though. Dansleaf. Is Archer Ulsterborn? I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what Shiro's heritage is. We don't know anything about him from before the fire because he wants to reject all of that shit. <laughs> uh, Dance Leaf, Unidentified Axe Sword, Kansho uh, Bakuya, and yeah, so all of uh, Gilgamesh's weapons, okay. Anyways, the ghost like assassin in front of me is in front of me. I can't spare any attention for Caster and Tosaka's fight. Okay, boy boy, yes, fight time. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Saber's fight with uh, with Kuzuki back in the day was not the best, I will say, but um, hopefully this fight is more, it's just been a while since we've had a proper fight, and I've said that. <laughs> I said that when uh, we, uh, you know, a few, a couple streams ago, I was like, you know, it's been a while. The only one we've had kind of recently was the Kazuki one. I thought that one's a little lame, so, oh, excited. He knows what I intend to do. Ah! Oh. He will not let me buy time. Letting out the snake that even cornered Saber, Kazuki Suichiro comes to take my life. And you succeed in holding him off? Because that's fucking impressive. He was even able to sort of outspeed Saber. Granted, you know, Saber hadn't quite gotten used to his style and you've gotten a chance to see it, but still, that is really saying something about uh, your... Capa physical capabilities in the moment if you can actually keep up with cop them just because you saw him doing it in the past um it's it's quite impressive i can hold him off for a minute at most okay this is is this you lying to yourself that you're not actually good enough to succeed or uh are you being genuine and thinking that yes you can succeed in holding off for a moment and not thinking you can't succeed at all it should be the same for tosaka what do you mean? She can only hold off Caster for a minute? Because I think Caster's supposed to win, right? Originally, with our opponents reversed, we had no chance of victory. Is that true? I guess, yeah. You need some kind of magic resistance to counter Caster's bullshit. And he's too fast for Caster to launch her magic. I suppose there's an argument to be made there. Uh, I mean, is enough for Tosaka's plan? Let's hope. I guess, but it's like... Yeah, okay, I can see the logic there, is that Kazuki's too fast for Rin's magic, but Caster is too fast of a caster because of her skill. Caster's got a skill. Um, divine, high speed divine language. Yeah, all right. Fair, fair, fair. Um, maybe the idea is that, yeah, Caster, because she's such a fast caster, uh, can beat Shiro before he's got a chance to attack her. Whereas, because Rin is a regular speed caster, um, Kazuki can beat Rin before she's got a chance to cast anything. Uh, in this situation, though, if Caster's such a fast caster, uh, is Rin really able to keep up if she's not able to keep up with the speed of Kazuki? Rin is definitely a slower caster, but maybe she has some kind of natural magical resistance among her that Shiro doesn't have that lets her, gives her a chance to cast her spells. I could see that. Originally, with our opponents reversed, we had no chance of victory. Close range fighting or magic. We have no way to beat our opponents who surpasses in skill. Wait, you're admitting that Rin can't beat Caster, though. What are you trying to say, Shiro? <laughs> but looking at it the other way, we can at least put up a fight. What you're saying is that normally you wouldn't be able to win, but Rin's actually got some plan that likely involves the jewels. Tosaka would be killed in an instant if she fought Kazuki. I'd be killed in an instant if I fought Caster. I mean, I think an instant is, is a bit much, but okay. 
In contrast, we might not be able to win, but we won't be killed in an instant with this matchup. I think the plan is still to win, though. <laughs> I understand the logic, though. I get it. So, in other words... This battle is not about how to beat one's opponent. Instead, this is a contest to see how long we can hold off an opponent of superior skill. There also needs to be a way to win at the end, though, so I hope you fought that- I hope you thought that far ahead! <laughs> oh? Interlude to what? Archer Lancer? Oh, there is an Archer Lancer! Okay! The two weapons clash! Here I thought that was gonna be a full cutaway battle, okay. We actually get to see it. Alright. The two weapons clash. My favorite fight song. Yes. Is this my favorite fight song? It's up there. I want to say this is my favorite fight song. Twin swords and lance. The attacks are executed to take their wielder's neck. There's no hesitation in those attacks. So maybe the ultimate plan is that Archer, maybe Rin's plan does revolve around Archer coming in. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> um... It definitely is going to have to tie in now. They wouldn't show us this just for fight's sake. There has to be... There has to be, um... A flow to a fight. It can't just be we're going to see them going back and forth for a while. There has to be some relevant endgame, which I assume involves overlapping with the fight we're having. Because the actual fight they're happening isn't very relevant beyond the fact that uh, Lancer is just distracting Archer, I would say. So, unless they overlap with our fight, or... Kire or someone ends up showing up to interrupt them. There's not much relevance to show in this fight, so we'll see where it goes. There's no hesitance in those attacks. No hesitation. Each strike is meant to kill. Even Lancer makes no exceptions. Despite the fact he said he wouldn't kill Archer, to be fair, you know. When you're fighting someone this strong, you have to try to kill even if you don't want to kill. At least, you know, until you wear them down. Even though he told Tosaka Rin, his ally, that he would go easy. <laughs> that becomes secondary once the battle starts. Exactly. Fair, fair. Uh, at least it's secondary, though. At least he's thinking about it in the back of his mind. It merely means that if his lance happens to miss Archer's heart, and if it does not kill him instantly, he will refrain from finishing Archer off on the spot. Okay, if he's actually thinking that way, that's a very fair way to think. Good on you, Lancer. Uh. Ugh. That's uh, about, I think, as much as Rin could hope for in this situation, so. Even in that case, his enemy will die, but Lancer just needs to drag him to Tosaka Rin before that happens. <laughs> oh, you still think he'll die? Maybe uh, with some jewels she might be able to save him. I don't know, I think Shiro's pretty durable. Okay, but that's the question, though. Does this version of Archer still have Avalon in him? That's, I think, a big question, because Timeline 1, there was a clear transference where Shiro gave Avalon back to Saber. However, in this Timeline 2, such a transference has not happened. So depending on the future that Archer comes from, he might still have Avalon in him and therefore might be more durable than you are expecting, Lancer. His enemy will die, but Lancer just needs to drag him to Tosaka in before that happens. Lancer does not care what happens after that. Clinging clashing! Shlinging slashing! <clears throat> oh, that was Archer. <clears throat> the red demonic lance invades the enemy territory. The lance breaks through Archer's defense each time it is thrust. Ooh. Ah, uh, yeah, so this is similar, I would say, to the way uh, the first fight went. Lancer always being on the offensive. Um, if memory serves of how that fight went, it's been a while, of course. That was, like, the first fight. But, um, Lancer was on the offensive for the most part, um, until Archer was looking for an opening to potentially take advantage of. But Lancer, because of his instincts of avoiding battle, if memory serves, he avoided just as Archer was about to, um, go for a good attack. And then Lancer was like, I guess I have to finish you off, I have to take you seriously, and he was about to go for his gay bold. So, I think in this case, Lan Archer is still looking for an opening. Archer is very much the type of person at this point who will fight on the defensive till he sees a good opening to take in one strike. He doesn't want to waste his good strike. If Archer has Avalon, he goes up uh, another power tier, considering what Shiro did at the end of Timeline 1. Mm -hmm. The Lance breaks through Archer's defenses each time it is th thrust. It is not like that night. Mmm.
It is not like that knight. Archer cannot block Lancer's attacks now as he could then. Oh, Lancer's going even... Maybe Lancer was holding back back then because he was just meant to scout enemies. So it means Archer's on the defensive again. Or is Archer weaker for some reason at this point? Hmm. Breaks through Archer's defense each time he's thrust. Cannot block now as he could then. Interesting. Interesting. All right. We're going to make another intermission. Uh, I don't want to. I want to keep going, but, you know, the, I can't avoid my body's call to urinate, so. I'll overwrite this one. Archer Lancer rematch. Yeah, regardless, this should be the last intermission. Um, maybe I'm going to try to look for a good beat and maybe stop soon. But, uh, for now, um, right, I gotta pee. I don't wanna pee. I wanna keep going, but I really gotta pee. Yeah. I think I might call this just, it might be my favorite song in the game. That might be a little quick to say. I think definitely favorite battle song. I'm a big fan. Big fan. I like this one a lot. Anyways. <clears throat> Archer cannot black B black Pfft. Archer cannot black Lancer's attacks now as he could then is only natural is it this is their second battle so Lancer improved from that battle but Archer not so much <laughs> I would think um you know Shiro being as smart as he is would have uh, improved if anything he might be pretending to not be keeping up as much but that's all part of his plan Lancer was under the command spells bind huh to learn his enemy's strengths, his master told Lancer, Oh, wait, what? Was there an actual reason why he had to be weaker? Wait, he did a real command spell with that? <laughs> there was a real command spell going on? <laughs> I guess that makes sense, given how Lancer likes to fight and win, but he wasn't able to. Huh. He used a command spell for it. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> Lancer was nerfed the whole time. I guess so. But he's not nerfed anymore? I guess because he's already fought them all separately? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> including Gilgamesh. Oops! <laughs> uh, to fight against everyone. But... Uh, fight against everyone, but do not defeat them. Just survive your first battle against any opponent. Survive your first battle. Well, he didn't survive his first battle against Gilgamesh. Or if he did, he retreated and then got killed later on. Um, I mean, I understood the idea that Lancer would live a while because he's just got that innate skill to survive. But um, the idea that he had a specific spell telling him not to win, I can definitely see why Lancer hates his gut so much now. <laughs> Do not defeat them, and make sure you survive. Now we know why the instant kill lance can't insta-kill anyone. Okay, to be fair, um, uh, I don't know if that should have applied to Shiro. Unless, like, was he pre-selected to be part of the Grail Ward? Did the Grail already know he was going to be part of it? Or did he end up being part of it when he summoned Saber? At what point was he a master? Also, does it matter that he's a master? Or does the command spell affect masters or only servants? I think there's some semantic questions here. <laughs> but um, against Saber, yes. Saber living the Gaybolg attack is interesting. But Lancer seemed to be surprised that Saber lived the Gaybolg attack. So, I don't know. Um, that still would have been his first encounter. And yet he was like, shit, you're supposed to die. Was that him playing along, pretending like he didn't have the curse placed upon him? Ah. He didn't uh, use the true name, he just stabbed. I suppose, but it still said like he stabbed him in the heart or something like that, and then he didn't... Or, I don't know, it... <laughs> um, I suppose he didn't use the true name, but him still living that was still very sketchy. But anyways, do not defeat them, survive your first fight. It's interesting that for someone who has a one-shot attack, and that seems to be the thing that gives away his true name is his one-shot attack, he seems to keep trying to throw it out, even despite this um, 
this limitation he has on him. I find it very weird that he's throwing out this Gable attack against Archer, against Saber. Well, he was going to do it against Archer. And yet... And yet what? And yet, and yet he knows that it's not going to work? I just... That seems weird to me. Unless he's doing some weird plotting, trying to get in their heads. It's weird. So, the implication here is that he fought everyone once. I could see that. I could see him fighting Ryder. Not winning, because even though he's the better servant, he's got to let Ryder win. Maybe he's trying to go against Kira's spell by using Gabel. I could definitely see that. Possibly. That means that his want to battle, that part of his honor, goes against his honor towards Kira and, and his douche command spell. I suppose so. Huh. That's interesting. So he would have fought Berserker once and survived. I can see that because he's really good at surviving. Uh, fought Assassin once. I don't know that he would have ever um, fought Caster once. Because Assassin probably would have stopped him from getting to that point. But, um, hmm, it's interesting. I don't think he... If he knows about Gilgamesh now, which I, I think he does because he would have... I, he was probably eavesdropping on that battle. But I don't know that he would have known about Gilgamesh in Timeline 1 before Gilgamesh showed up at the church. I'm doubting it anyway. So I assume if that was still his first battle and that nerfed him... Theoretically, he should still, should still have had to have survived that, though. So Gilgamesh could have tracked him down, I guess. It would have definitely taken a while, but... Interesting. Also, is that the technical... So, does the wish ever wear off? Did it wear off because <laughs> the spell? In theory, I mean, Kirei seems to be alive based on the way everyone's talking about him. Despite the one interlude that was like, oh yeah, she killed him. Um, or a couple interludes did that. They seem to be talking like he's alive. Um, so I assume it wears off after you fight them once. But technically, with the wording here, it says, Fight against everyone, but do not defeat them. The wording implies never... It could be interpreted either way. It could be never defeat them. Or... Because it just says survive reverse battle. It doesn't... It says survive reverse battle, so it doesn't mean they have to survive subsequent battles. But it doesn't necessarily clearly state, do not defeat them in their first battle. It, it could, again, just be a general thing where it's like, fight against everyone, do not defeat them in your initial fight against everyone. Maybe there's an implication there, but uh, <laughs> maybe that's why Shiro and Saber had enough time at the final fight. Gil was too busy trying to track and kill Q down. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, interesting. That's interesting. Lancer was under the command spells of Vine to learn his enemy's strength, his mancer told his His mancer told uh, <laughs> Laster. Up to whose interpretation is the command spell? The Grail? The Servant? The Master? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Lancer seems to know about Gilgamesh, but I don't think he knows that Gilgamesh has ties with uh, Kirai still. Or he probably would have cut those ties by now. That is the only order he was given. He has followed such an unreasonable command... And this is his first battle without any binds. Oh, okay. So, I guess the idea was he couldn't do a second fight with the same servant. He couldn't go out of his way to do it until he had fought everyone once. So, I guess by this point he would have fought Caster then. Really? I assume just Assassin. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the implication here is that he's fought everyone once and now the bind is lifted. Like, if he fought someone a second time before fighting someone else the first time, it wouldn't count. But if he fought against everyone and did not defeat them once, then it counts, I guess? <laughs> Let's be like, hey, white hair girl, can I kill this guy now that's a second battle? <laughs> is that silence a no? <laughs> uh, white hair girl. Oh, you mean Elia? Um, I mean, it was Gilgamesh that uh, killed them, but, you know. Ah. Uh. He has followed such an unreasonable command, and this is first battle without any binds. Okay, Lancer is secretly stronger than we ever realized. Alright, so he's a peg up in my book, because I pegged him as being second weakest, I think. Yeah, my current order in my head was Rider weakest, Lancer second weakest, um, Gilgamesh strongest. Then the order gets a little messy, but probably something like Gilgamesh number one, um, Caster, Saber, Archer as the top four. Then, what, 5th Berserker, 6th Assassin, 7th Lancer, was I think the order in my head, but maybe that needs to be reorganized now. Maybe he fought against Caster when she was under the, fir the first Master. That's a really interesting idea. The idea that um, maybe Lancer... Well, okay, that goes way back, though. So that means Kirei would have had to 
swap um, to Lancer before... Uh, but Lancer would have had to swap to Kirei before even Caster swapped to her second master, and that apparently happened a while ago, so... Um... <laughs> I'm aware that Servants has some rock, paper, scissors nature to them, but it's still interesting to give them general power. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy ranking them. It's a fun thing to do. Even if there is a certain rock, paper, scissors nature, you can't argue that Gilgamesh seems to be the rock to most people's scissors. Anyways, <clears throat> he has follow followed such an unreasonable command, and this is his first battle without any binds. He stayed to be the strongest servant summoned. I think... <laughs> um, I think the problem with Berserker, the idea of him being the strongest, is that the Elias feels assumed he would be because he's that great, but you get some cheaters like Saber getting outside help from Catabolg and possibly um, Avalon. And then Archer, you know, he's got some crazy stuff. Gilgamesh is in when he shouldn't have been. Um, I think there's a lot of servants that are kind of uh, cheating the system in this Grail War, so yeah, that's why Berserker's maybe not the strongest like he should be. Physically, he's definitely the strongest, but it cannot be like the boss battle. Yes. <laughs> uh, strongest in, yeah, in pure strength, sure, but you know, the battles come down to more than just pure strength. It cannot be the last battle. There is nothing binding Lancer. And Archer is now forced to fight the fastest heroic spirit. Ooh, got that speed. Oh boy! <clears throat> A strained voice escapes Archer's mouth. Even his hawk-like eyes cannot follow Lancer's spear. Oh boy. The Lancer's movement is a point to start with. And it is a flash of light now. He cannot discern the Lance coming at him. Oh boy. What are you going to do when even now your eyesight is failing you? Even Lancer's movements are becoming invisible now. Uh-oh. Even his movements, not just his lance. Uh-oh. Avalon is littling hers. That's not outside help. It is when it's in Shiro right now. She didn't have for the whole of Timeline 1 until Shiro gave it to her at the end. I count that outside help. She doesn't normally have that. Anyways. Dash, dash, dash. He has been able to block such attacks until now, because he has experienced them in a previous battle. Mmm. I see. So if he had gone this, you know, this fight in the first place without having, you know, experienced the attacks, he would have been screwed. Mm. He is more of an archer, to be fair, so it makes sense he's worse in close range with Lancer. He's doing what he can, using his inferi inferiority as a weapon to block Lancer's furious onslaught. Yeah, that's kind of something that in my head explained why Lancer was lower on the totem pole, because Archer could somewhat team up with Lancer in close range, and that's not even Archer's best shit. He's better at long range. So that's why it was in my mind. I'm like, okay, Lancer's kind of low down, but all along being stronger than uh, we realized, uh, you know, that definitely is a peg up in his book. Archer now has to fight his full uh, the full power of the guy who killed him. <laughs> Lancer didn't quite kill Shiro in the past. He's doing what he can, using his inferiority as a weapon to block Lancer's furious onslaught. He is controlling where the attacks come. Uh, using his inferiority as a weapon to block Lancer's furious onslaught. I don't quite get what that means. His inferiority as a weapon? Yes, because he's the bone of his sword. He is the inferiority weapon. <laughs> he's controlling where the attacks come. The Knight in Red limits the oncoming attacks by leaving fatal openings. Fatal? Um, fatal openings as in if Lancer doesn't protect his openings, Archer will go for them? I suppose, but like Lancer would be leaving those openings himself. I guess depending on how Archer reacts, that's a possibility I can believe. Mm. Ugh, leaving fatal openings. Of course, he will die if he does not dodge the attacks. Oh boy. But if he can choose between instant death and getting slowly cut up, he prefers to risk instant death. Oh. Uh, if he, he will die if he does not dodge the attacks. He can choose between instant death and getting slowly cut up. He prefers to risk the instant death. Well, Shiro is the death, death, death seeker, as it were, so. Hmm. Oh, Archer's leaving fatal openings as his own guard. That is not how I was reading that at all. Using his inferiority as a weapon. That is not how I was reading that. 
He's controlling where the attacks come. The Knight in Red limits the oncoming attacks by leaving fatal openings. Oh, he's leaving fatal openings that Lancer feels like he has to go for because they're fatal openings. But Archer, because Lancer's going for the fatal openings, Archer's able to predict them and block them. Okay, that makes sense to me now that I'm thinking like that. That's not how I read it, though. Uh, leaving open fatal openings to himself. His own death wish is a weapon and tactical mindset. Well, now that he's tactical like that, <laughs> he prefers to risk instant death to taking slow cuts. That is the better way to ultimately potentially win the battle, though. Otherwise, it all will have been for nothing. Mmm, what all will have been for nothing? Fighting him in the first place? Or your big plan to save everyone? Fortunately, Lancer is still taking Archer lightly. Okay, given... I think this is, in that case, it's more of an Archer um, interlude, which I guess makes sense because, you know, he is the main character. But, um... Mm, I suppose it's from both. Yeah, it's from both. The fact that it's saying L Lancer is still taking Archer lightly is what's just, what... Assumes the idea that it's Archer's perspective, but I guess it's just both because you know Archer shouldn't have known Lancer's flashback that he was going easy all along. So I don't know. Or rather, he is lost in the joy of battle. <laughs> Lancer going to go uh, all out. I'm sure he would enjoy that. If they are to keep on assaulting each other like this, he can think of another thirty ways to show an opening. <laughs> uh assaulting each other like he can think of another 30 ways to show an opening as in like he's not taking the idea of winning too seriously for now he just wants to enjoy actually being in the battle <laughs> that does seem like a lancer thing after all this time i feel like the way okay kiri's spell to make lancer limited to the battles is interesting the more i think about it because like i feel like you know if he has to take gilgamesh and be limited in that battle too he i don't think he would have um I don't think he would have um, uh, uh, had it wear off. Uh, he wouldn't have fought Gilgamesh yet in this timeline, theoretically, unless he did. Maybe he went out of his way to fight Gilgamesh once he realized he existed to get it out of the way. It's just interesting. Um, I wonder if it wears off because Kira just lets it wear off because he doesn't want him to know about Gilgamesh. Or he actually did fight Gilgamesh in this timeline so that it could wear off. Huh. Maybe that did happen. It would have had to happen before the team up between them. So before the Berserker fight, Lancer might have caught up to him as he was looking to... Maybe because Kirei told him, hey, go check out Berserker. Maybe Kirei let him in on the 8th Servant um, at that point. You know, not saying that he's connected to him, but giving him a chance to fight Gilgamesh. What's the point of him giving him a chance to fight Gilgamesh, though? Um, maybe it was more he told him about Berserker... And maybe Shinji was doing his own thing about Gilgamesh, and Lancer happened to realize Gilgamesh was the thing on his own without Kirei pointing him in that direction. I guess. Hmm. Huh. Anyways, if they keep on insulting each other like this, he can think of another 30 ways to show an opening. Predicting using the information obtained. Planning using cultivated battle experience. Prediction using the... Okay, wait, who am I? Huh? Prediction, are they both doing this? Or do you, are you trying to say one is the other? Or are you trying to say one is both? Or <laughs> Maybe Kiri thinks he needs full power Q to deal with Caster. Uh, if Gil doesn't count, then he wouldn't have, he would have been full power against Gil in timeline one, which maybe he still lose that fight. But um, it's just something they haven't fully clarified. But um, maybe Kiri think he needs full power Q to deal with Caster. Yeah, I can see that. Anyways, prediction using the information obtained. Planning using cultivated battle experience. Those are the nerves of steel, the mind's eye that one obtains through training that they're both doing? Or are you saying this is from Archer's perspective? This is nothing extraordinary. This is the only skill he possesses. You mean Shiro? Okay, now you're singling out one person. Prediction using the information obtained, planning using cultivated battle experience. <laughs> Those are the nerves of steel, the mind's eye that one obtains through training. This is nothing extraordinary. This is the only skill he possesses. You mean Shiro's good at strategizing? That's his only good skill? <laughs> That's so funny that, uh, I mean, I did say Shiro was always smart. He was just, you know, I did say later on, once I saw the real, the realness of Shiro, he was always smart. He just chose to ignore it. So I can see that. It is not innate like Saber's instinct, but is a simple weapon that anyone can gain through hard work. Hmm. Yeah, Saber has a real, uh, instinct. <laughs> yeah, he would probably still lose that fight. I agree, but you know. It's something to think about. Um, 
what are the skills? Because Lancer has battle continuation, restart, rune, divinity. Saber has like an instinct A, and I believe Berserker has a sort of, um, I think he has something similar to instinct, but it's not called instinct. Mind's Eye, uh, I guess it's Mind's Eye, whereas Saber, her instinct is like the real version of Mind's Eye. Um, but then Archer doesn't really have, oh, Mind's Eye True B, wait, what? Oh, apparently we just got a thing. <laughs> Clairvoyance C allows vision of distant targets and improves his body movement and vision. A higher ranks allows servant to see through objects. Um, Mind's Eye True B. Okay, wait, hold on. How long have we had this? And then um, Lancer does not have Mind's Eye. So I don't think he's the one with the instincts. Berserker has Mind's Eye Fake B. Lancer has Mind... Or Archer's got Mind's Eye True B. So what's the difference between Mind's Eye True and Mind's Eye Fake? Insight fostered by training. Oh, I see. Whereas Berserker's is insight because he's a god oh just avoidance danger by six sense okay but then saber's instinct feel the best course the heightened six sense is now close to precognition what's the difference between mind's eye and instinct between because they have different ranks because hers is a couldn't it just be that he has like c mind's eye or b mind's eye and she has a mind's eye true no fake hers is fake because she's also special i don't know how that works archer's got got um true though a combat logic that allows for calm analysis of the situation and the enemy's ability in spite of danger and consideration uh, all possible a actions in a particular situation. If there's even a 1% chance of a comeback, this ability greatly improves chance of success. Right, okay. <clears throat> it is not innate like Saber's instinct, but is a simple weapon that anyone can gain through hard work. Oh, but double double ball! Dash, dash, dash. Ooh, Lancer looks perturbed. Lancer backs off and stops for a bit. Oh shoot, despite how much faster you are. Archer's side will keep you off because he's seen you fight once before. Mm. Darn, you might have actually gotten to him if you got a close range fight from uh, this the get-go. He looks the red archer over as though dissatisfied. Dissatisfied in what way? That he's stronger than you thought or weaker than you thought? It's obvious who's going to win. Oh, you think it's obvious Lancer's gonna win and you're sad that Archer is this weak? I guess that's fair, but Archer, knowing Archer, would have some kind of plan up his sleeve. Sheer definitely has a, a version mind's eye true. Um, see him doing a calm in battle and timing slowdown for him as he describes everything in battle. Yeah, that does seem to be a thing with him. It could be, on some level, a connection to Archer, but also he might just be really good at analyzing things on the fly. Given how good he is at analyzing the makeup and structure of things kind of sort of on the fly, it makes sense. It's obvious who is going to win. Archer has no chance of victory in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That has been obvious from the start. If Archer is an archer like his name states, this cannot be a match unless he's shooting from a long range. But still, he blocked the attacks. He is inferior and should not last a few more blows, but he blocked Lancer's full force attacks. Oh. Is Archer strong, or is Lancer going easy on him? You tell me, Intermodel. <laughs> you tell me, Interlude. <laughs> um, it's cool that the first person Shiro really fought was Lancer. When Lancer attacked him, and, you know, Lancer sort of went easy on him because he wanted to give Shiro a fighting chance. Um, and, you know, I was like, I thought you could do a bit more than that. And then later on, in the future past, the first fight we ever see Archer in in this novel is with Lancer. So, it's cool that for Lancer it happened beforehand, but for Shiro, um, it's cool seeing the narrative of my first ever fight was with you, and then, you know, my first fight summoned as a servant into this timeline was also with you when I'm much better and able to, you know, hold you off. You just were playing with me the first time you fought me, but now I was actually able to hold you off. Granted, you're the weakened version, but still. Toast sounds like a Shiro fight. He's inferior, but he's still winning. <laughs> That's the Shiro way to be, right? I know I'm inferior, but I'll find a way to win. Because I have to win. I have to win for my waifu's sake. Although, in Archer's case, I think he considers the world his waifu, and he wants to save everyone. As much as he can, at least. Is Archer strong, or is Lancer going easy on him? He laughs. Archer is a mysterious servant. Indeed he is. He can admit that Archer is strong in that regard. But... It's unthinkable for Lancer to be going easy. Maybe in this fight we can start seeing Archer, you know, birth some more creative swords beyond just his Bakusho and stuff. 
and his uh, bone sword because he's got unlimited blade works. Start maybe eating into that pile of theoretically unlimited blades. I guess it's unlimited in the sense that, you know, you keep whipping out Bancho and uh, Kancho and Bakuya. But um, I think you have a bit more than that based on the vision we see of you in your scattered wasteland of blades. But it's unthinkable for un Lancer to be going easy. The first attack was aimed at the neck to chop his head off. The second attack was aimed at the heart to destroy his body. He cannot be going easy. He shouldn't be, but... It is certainly true that he wasn't trying to kill Archer. Oh, is there some part of you that is going a little easy because of what Rin said? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Is that it? Or is there something more? Uh, who said Archer has unlimited blade works? Nobody. I am assuming. I'm assuming he has unlimited blade works. That's what I'm assuming the name comes from. Because he keeps pulling out all the swords. And this timeline seems to be heavily focused around Archer. And Shiro's connection to Archer. And Shiro's body seems to in some way be made up of swords. It just would fit. fit be fitting for Archer to have unlimited blade works. I could be wrong. But to me it definitely seems like that's the implication of the name. And based on how everything's happened. And how it's so focused around Archer. Uh, I could be wrong. But that's what the conclusion I drew. I drew it quite a long time ago. So I'm the one who said it, if you're asking. How does uh, one know this sort of fight is serious? Mm. Uh, oh, you're saying it's not serious? <laughs> it's not serious enough to be on screen? It should have just kept cut off? <laughs> How does one know this sort of fight is serious? A battle between servants is a battle between noble phantasms. Mm. What do you think it actually is, then? The Unlimited Blade Works? Uh, that's hard to say. Shiro seems to be made up of swords to some extent, which to me says the unlimited blades. As far as unlimited blade works, while he's working to make the blades every time, he has to think of the image in his head and all of this stuff, so he pulls the blade out. Where the blade is coming from is a bit debatable. I'm still not sure if, uh... Shiro is soup, has all these blades inside of him, if that's a ripple effect from the future Archer coming to him, or if he's got something crazy from the past already feeding into it before he becomes Archer in the future. I don't know, there might be more to it, or it might just be an Archer loop. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where the Unlimited Blade Works comes from, but... Uh. Uh. <laughs> a battle between servants is a battle between noble phantasms. The fact that he's fighting Archer without using his proof that he is going easy on him. As far as, you know, if I was to think that there's an actual thing that the Unlimited Blade Works is that Archer is drawing on, I don't know where he would be getting it from. I understand the idea that Archer can comprehend all of the- Shiro can comprehend all the stuff and potentially pull any sword out. And he's a big fan of swords, so he could keep making an unlimited- he could keep working on an unlimited amount of blades. So I don't think Unlimited Blades is an actual thing he's pulling from. I just think he's able to do that, and maybe he's able to do that because of the swords within him, and which means maybe there's more to it than just that, and there is a beginning before just beyond the bleed-through, but if there is, I don't really have a clear thought as to what that is, per se. But, the fact that he's fighting Archer without using his proof that he is, is proof that he is going easy on him. Oh yeah, the fact that he hasn't gone straight for Gable, I suppose. The reason behind it is because it's all part of Kirei's plan. Must be the thanks he heard earlier. Oh no, because he's legitimately going easy on him. Despite the fact that internally he's like, I'm gonna go all out, and only if I maybe I'm lucky, but <laughs> you're not really going all out because of what Rin said to you? Mm. Because she said thanks. Mm, I see. Daw, <laughs> you do awe each other. Aw, oh, Lancer, you're just a big softy. <laughs> Damn, are you kidding me? <laughs> maybe I really did fall for her. <laughs> Ooh. The weapons clash harder than before. The two spring apart in a shower of sparks. The full force attack by Lancer is nullified by the full force attack by Archer. They're about five meters apart. It's a distance Lancer can close in an instant. Mmm. Guessing. I don't get it. What don't you get? The Spearman in Blue murmurs. Oh boy, what doesn't he get? Kisama, 
キャスターになぞ遅れは取るまい。Oh, I see. <laughs> you switched to Caster's side even though you're this strong? You and Rin would have had no trouble with Caster. Uh, I think he was protecting Rin because he thought even if they would have won, Rin might have gotten caught up in the crossfire or Samer might have. And he wanted to switch sides to make sure that didn't happen. And also, potentially, he wanted to get out of the situation saving Caster as well. That might have been there too. So, his instincts to save, I think, are what led to his、uh, side switching. Lancer stops emitting murderous intent, but there's no opening in his stance. Okay. This is a little bit of a cool down. This is kind of a beat. This is kind of a beat. We might be about to go into a spiel. Hmm. I can maybe use this as a beat. All right. I do want to go long tomorrow. I can maybe do long tomorrow and have a big thing of a jigger tomorrow. And I have been saying, I will say that I've been, I've been、uh, musing on my Discord about the idea of potentially getting into a, a slightly lesser schedule where I don't go for as long on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But, um,. Uh, but、um, for something like this, where I'm you know, super like, oh, I think we're in a bit of a climactic moment, I'll probably go long anyways, even if I do start doing that, which I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure on yet. I'm, still, I'm using this word weak to think about it. But、uh, yeah, I think this is a fine beat. Lancer is, has calmed down, as it were. So I think I'll take this and stop here for the day.、Um, and tomorrow we should be able to go longer and hopefully get to the end of this big climactic moment. Mm hmm. Why did Archer switch sides? Also, real talk, I suddenly have to pee again. My bladder's being a jerk. Why did Archer switch sides? Um, what if tomorrow internet happens? Then internet happens. I can't do much about that. I don't want it to happen. But if it happens, then it happens. I'll be unhappy if it happens. There's not much I can say. I don't want it to happen. That's about it. Anyways,、uh, I'll see you guys next time. Still, don't let your phrase、uh, stop recording.